Welcome to TLS Together. This is your host, Bonnie Church. Our goal is to give you the opportunity to listen into a real coaching session with a real coach. And we are honored this month to have Dr. Nancy Miller Ely as our coach. Dr. Nancy has a lot of credibility. Okay, look at her experience here. She was the national program leader for nutrition for the United States Department of Agriculture. She has 25 plus years in nutritional research funded by public organizations like the National Institute of Health, the Environmental Protection Agency, the FDA, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. The focus of her research has been bioavailability. I guess that's why she loves the isotonic so much. Uh, She's authored more than 70 publications and has one patent to her name. She wrote a white paper on obesity for the White House. She's been in community-based nutritional education and nutritional consulting for years. She's also a certified TLS weight loss solution coach and trainer. She serves on the Nutrimetrics clinical faculty, and she is also a Nutrimetrics HP and consultant. She was the 2009 Transitions Lifestyle Coach of the Year. So on that note, let's listen in as Dr. Nancy coaches. All right. Well, I'd like to welcome you to week one of the TLS 21 Day Challenge. And I have the good fortune today to be speaking with my friend and colleague, Bambi Sturgeon. And, you know, Bambi, when I think about you doing this 21 Day Challenge, I get super excited because I know you as a friend and I also know you from doing volunteer stuff together. And I know when you make up your mind to do something, you do a great job. So I'm really eager to talk about what it takes to get started with the TLS 21 Day Challenge. Are you excited about it? I am excited. Thanks for having me, Nancy. Well, um, thank you, Bambi, for your willingness to also serve, you know, um, as a, my colleague here in recording this so that other people can benefit from your experience and our discussions. So my, my objective today, as you know, as we're just chatting back and forth here informally, is to, you know, kind of welcome you to TLS and the 21-day challenge. And I'm going to just review the challenge guidelines to make sure that everything's crystal clear for you because I know you're going to be getting started shortly. And we'll talk about the tracking sheet, and I'm going to just share some food ideas. But, you know, I know that you're a great cook too, Bambi, and you probably have recipes to share with me and others. Then I'll talk a little bit about some success strategies and resources, and then I'll close with a little bit of inspiration, sharing with you some results other people have gotten. Does that sound good? All right. Sounds great. Ready to get started. All right. So, you know, what is TLS? I know, Bambi, that you have some experience with TLS, but it actually stands for Transitions Lifestyle System. And we believe that it's the most comprehensive and customizable weight loss program on the planet. We really think of it as really being a lifestyle and not a diet. And I always tell people that we should never diet because the first three letters spell die. So uh, we really want a program that's going to focus on enhancing our metabolism and focusing on fat loss. I always tell people, I really don't care how much I weigh. I care what size jeans I wear. So TLS has four key components. One is low glycemic impact eating, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's just eating to stabilize your blood sugar. And then improved body composition is another component because we want to have more muscle, less fat. Uh, Some supplementation is critical because it helps to, you know, um, repair a damaged metabolism and optimize uh, our everything. And then new, uh, education is another key component. And that's the important part about TLS is we teach people how to do things. And, you know, Bambi, I know you have some experience with TLS and that you've done really well with it. And you know where to go and what to do and how to get back on track when things get off. So that's really why you're back with TLS at this time. Is that correct? That's true. I've had some great success in the past. And then I've um, made some less than stellar choices with food. And so I'm ready to get back on track and um, to optimize my health. Yeah, I think all of us would like to be the best version of ourselves. And it's just wonderful because TLS is more than just a dietary program. It really is a healthy lifestyle program. And it it has several different components. Starting in the upper right-hand corner, we, we talk about low glycemic eating, and that is just eating to stabilize our blood sugar. Most people, uh, as you know, get up and their blood sugar might be in that green zone there. And when we're in the green zone, we're actually in the fat burning zone, which is, I don't know about you, Bambi, but I'm all about burning fat. But then, you know, if somebody eats something like a bagel or a Pop-Tart or a muffin, then their blood sugar goes up. And then we get into the red zone there at the top. That's called being hyperglycemic. And it's really, you know, we get there by eating foods that break down quickly to sugar. After that, then your blood sugar drops, and then we become low 
blood sugar, which we call hypoglycemic. And that's when you feel horrible. And all you want to do is just find something to shove in your face. And, you know, a vending machine will do, a piece of cardboard, whatever. You just need to get, you know, your blood sugar levels back up. But low glycemic impact eating, which is focusing on healthy fruits and vegetables and uh, lean, clean um, sources of protein, that will keep us in the green zone all the time and we'll be burning fat. And when we do that, we look better, we feel better, we have more energy. I like to say we'll take up less space, Bambi. And um, <laughs> I think it's just an amazing way to eat because it really pays off and we feel well. But, you know, the eating, even though we talk about that first, isn't the only thing. We have to have adequate hydration. And you see on the slide here, it's got eight little glasses of water to remind us that that's a minimum amount. We need to have quality restorative sleep. Our hormones get repaired between about 1 and 3 in the morning, roughly, depending on your work schedule and everything. And if you're not in the right you know, level of sleep, you're not going to get the maximum benefit. We also want to make sure we exercise. And I know that you and Dan like to bike. I also know that you go to the gym and you're, you, know, you do several different classes. So I know that you've got the exercise under control. Um, but we do need a, you know, 150 minutes per week. And we want to have you know, a, a distribution between aerobic exercise and also strength training. And then right. stress reduction, of course, is important. But, you know, I know that you have someone that, uh, that you live with that makes your life easy and you have those grandbabies to visit and that you enjoy them. And I'm sure that those are part of your stress reduction plan. Absolutely, they are. <laughs> so I wanted to just like walk through the little brochure that comes with the program and just highlight a couple of points. So we call this a 21-day program, but it's really broken down into two phases. The first phase is a cleanse, and it's just designed to be kind of a fresh start for your body. And the idea here is that we're going to curb your cravings. Um, some of us crave, crave salty foods, some fatty foods, some sugary foods. We can break that craving, which is awesome, to help to set us up for long-term success. We're going to be eating lots of fruits and vegetables during detox. And, you know, we used to do detoxes without protein, Bambi. I think you re might remember that. But now we, we know that phase two liver detoxification requires protein. So you actually get two servings of clean protein during phase one. And I'll, I'm going to go through the food list. But, you know, it's things like chicken, fish, um, you know, uh, we're, we won't be having any cheeseburgers. Let me put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. There's no dairy. <laughs> exactly. The phase two, which we, you know, we'll have a separate call for each week of that too, but, you know, phase two is really going to focus on fat burning because we want to become lean, mean, fat burning machines. And we want to optimize the maximum, you know, uh, fat burning uh, that we can do because when we shed fat, we reduce our health risk, we take up less space, and we improve our body composition, which also enhances our metabolism. So, you know, phase two is going to help us get rid of excess weight and fat and also feel better. So, you know, it's great that it's broken down and we have two different parts, but this detox part is our focus today. During the 21-day challenge in the brochure, it talks about the fact that we need to get our sleep, which I've mentioned. We don't want to skip meals, and we really don't want to go more than four hours without eating. So, Bambi, I know sometimes we get in a, in a bind. We're out somewhere. We're stuck. Just do the best that you can to follow the schedule. Um, we realize that, you know, everybody's busy and I'm all about progress and not perfection. So we just do our best to follow the guidelines. So if, if you're, if you are five hours without eating, but you get home, then just go ahead and eat. And I want to be clear that you understand that if you, let's say, got delayed for some reason and you normally eat dinner at six, but it's eight o'clock, don't feel like that's too late. The most important thing is that you eat and fuel your body. So no worries about the exact spacing if something, you know, goes awry. But I know you're a great planner, right? So you kind of know what you're doing. I, I try to be. Um, and I try and pack snacks if I'm going to be out and I'm not sure when I'm going to be home. So that also helps. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, when you bring in your groceries, getting things prepared, having like your snack bags of whatever, baby carrots, cucumber slices, I think that is a really makes it so much easier to be, you know, planning in advance and to be prepared. Yeah, it's easy just to reach for something. And, you know, we could spend 20 minutes or so talking about that, but I just want the people that are listening to appreciate the fact that alcohol is not included because it does affect our metabolism. It also does affect our cravings. And so for, you know, three weeks, we feel like people can just do without that so that they can optimize their results. 
also we're doing a cleanse and you know alcohol is a liver accumulator so we're we want to like clean up your liver we want to you know everything to be working optimally it's kind of like changing the oil filter in your car so we want to make sure that people have the you know the best results and we're going to avoid alcohol because that's going to enhance them you can use spices and herbs to do enhance your meals and i know that you're an excellent cook so you know the kinds of things you can include are things you know like garlic or cinnamon or cloves or a little bit of seasoned salt or you know just any herbs that you like can be included we've already spoken okay. about drinking water and making sure we get at least uh, eight eight ounce glasses now the TLS 21 day program avoids grains starches and dairy so grains sometimes people think that that just means wheat or it just means corn it means no quinoa either or any no buckwheat no no grains at all and starches would be things like, you know, potatoes. A lot of times people will say to me, Bambi, oh, potatoes are a vegetable, right? Well, they really aren't. They're a starch. <laughs> so we, we won't be having those during the program. And then we eliminate dairy. The reason we eliminate those three things is because those are the three things that are most likely to cause inflammation in someone's body. And when we're inflamed, that's what's part of the con thing that contributes to us being overweight. We don't use sugar or artificial sweeteners added into our diet, and we choose raw, raw or lightly steamed veggies. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, that you can't you stir fry. That's a great way to just kind of lightly cook your veggies. Um, I also like to uh, oven roast my vegetables. Oftentimes for dinner, Kevin and I will have a whole cookie sheet with, um, uh, say, asparagus on there and broccoli on there and baby carrots, and we just roast them in the oven topped with a little bit of olive oil. And uh, so it's delicious. And again, you can use the different condiments to enhance it. One of the things that's really good to do is to take some before and after photos. And this is off our TLSSlim.com site. And the first photo on the lower left is good. You have a front and a side. And I also like to take a back photo because, you know, um, we all don't get to see that side of ourselves always. And a lot of times that's where we make big progress. So you want to know that. You want it to be a full body thing, so you want it to be from head to toe, so you can really see your whole, you know, physique. You want to be dressed appropriately so you can see. Sometimes people wear, like, really baggy gym clothes or whatever, and it won't, you can wear those same clothes at the beginning and the end and look the same, so we want to make sure that, you know, you can actually see. And you and I did your photos, so I, I think we have good representation, and I'm sure that you will enjoy um, being able to compare your after photos to your before photos. Um, when you're com once you've completed the program. Yes, I will. <laughs> so we have the 21 day challenge checklist. So we're just going to focus on the left right now because that's days one through seven, which is our detox week. So as part of that, you know, the supplements are shown across the bottom. From the left, first we have the NutraClean seven day cleansing system. And I'll talk about that in some detail. The next thing that's shown there is the core. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Next, we have the multivitamin and the OPC3, which I'll give you some details on. And finally, there are some nutrition shakes shown there. And those are going to be used in phase two, not in phase one. If somebody really wanted to have a shake in phase one, they could use as an option the TLS whey protein shake, which are the shakes that come in the packets. They don't have extra added fat or fiber. It's just a clean protein shake. And that's used primarily, you know, pre or post workout. So the multivitamin that's in there is an isotonic, which means that it's going to be readily and quickly absorbed. It's a powder that you mix with water and drink. And I know you've got experience, not just with the multivitamin Bambi, but you use uh, several of our products. So I think you use the whole daily essentials kit and magnesium. So I don't really have to spend a lot of time explaining to you how to do it. But basically, people are going to measure this out in a measuring teaspoon is what I recommend instead of a little bottle cap and pour it into a glass. And then you add two ounces for each one dose of the powdered product. We also have OPC3, and OPC3 is a really potent antioxidant that helps to combat free radicals. And when we eat our regular food, which is, you know, unfortunately affected by pesticides, herbicides, growth hormones, antibiotics, we over time can have oxidative stress. So this will help to offset damage from that. It's great to reduce inflammation, and I've already said that that will help us to release weight and fat. And OPC also supports healthy blood sugar levels. So if you think about that graph, you know, that we showed earlier, it's going to keep you in that green zone. Do you have any questions about either the multi or the OPC3, Bambi? 
No, I don't. I've been taking them regularly, so I'm, I'm good on You're those. You're good with those. Okay, great. Yep. The other three products in the kit are the, the seven day cleanse, the shakes, and the core. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about that and give you a couple of tips. So in that seven day cleanse kit, you're going to have three key products. So you have the foil blister pack and that has release tablets. Those are to be taken either 30 minutes before breakfast or two hours after your breakfast. So each person kind of has to figure that out for themselves based on their schedule as to what's better. You know, sometimes um, if people have to do a commute, I recommend that they take them two hours after breakfast so that they have time to eat their breakfast and get to work without concern of having to use the bathroom. If, you know, some people get up very early and so they find it's easier just to take it 30 minutes before their breakfast and that works for them. And so it's totally up to you. In the seven day cleanse kit, there's also a clear packet that has four things in it, two release tablets and two hepato cleanse. The release tablets are the same as what you're taking in the morning. The hepato cleanse helps to, you know, clean up your liver. That's the, the analogy I use was the oil filter in the car. So the hepato cleanse is going to be, you know, very helpful. And we take that packet of products at bedtime. So you just take it and make sure you, you know, drink some water with it and you will be good to go. The third thing that's in the, the detox kit is a fiber powder. And it's a really high quality fiber powder that provides you with a total of nine grams of fiber. And, you know, the average American gets like, I don't know, something like 12 in a day. So you're going to be getting nine plus what you get from your diet, which will be great because, you know, USDA recommends 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day. And it's one of the most under-consumed things in our diet. So I'm, I love that that's included in this particular kit. And it, it doesn't have any kind of fruit flavor or anything. It has a little bit of stevia to sweeten it. But it's, it's really palatable. And you're going to take that. Um, and, you know, on the directions, Bambi, it says to take it in the morning. But I find that most people are very happy taking it right before they go to bed. Because if they do that, then they're going to get up and they're going to have a bowel movement, you know, and go on with their day. It makes it really easy to kind of time things. It's absolutely fine, though, if you prefer to take it in the morning. It, either way, it will work. It's just important that you get it in during the day. So um, I want to also just be clear uh, that you don't have to live in the bathroom when you do this seven-day cleanse. I've actually done it even while I was traveling. So sometimes people get very nervous if they've never done a detox. I know that you have. So I, I, I'm pretty sure you're comfortable with all of this. But do you have any, either any questions or do you have comments, Bambi, about the seven-day cleanse? Um, I don't have any questions. The, the one comment I have is that the couple of times I've done this before, I have taken the fiber powder in the morning, and that has worked fine for me, for my schedule. But it's nice to know that it is also okay to take it at bedtime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, that's, you know, sometimes clinical experience gives us some additional insights, which is great. The next product that I wanted to talk about is the core. And the core is like probably my very favorite of the TLS products just because of what it does. It's got two key ingredients in it. One's called Leptocore and the other is Green Select Phytosome. And what I love about the TLS core is that it really helps to support a healthy metabolism and it does it several different ways. One is that it helps to block the absorption of starchy carbs. Now, you might say to me, but Nance, you told me we're not eating any starchy carbs. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sometimes carbs are, are hidden in something or you might be eating out and there's, you know, something, for example, in your salad dressing that you didn't even know. Or, you know, maybe you make a less than optimum choice because you're stuck. So this is, you know, a great insurance policy. It also helps to maintain normal blood sugar levels and promote in normal insulin activity. So that's perfect for enhancing our metabolism. It can help with hunger and it stimulates fat burning or lipolysis and helps to promote weight loss. So now is my favorite, you know, slide coming up. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the core. So we also have nutrition shakes, but those are in phase two, so we're not going to really talk about that today. The leptocore um, was studied, which is the key ingredient in the core, and I want to just show you these results because they're pretty impressive, and it highlights the fact that this is way more than a weight management product. In fact, I have people who use this product long after they've achieved their weight loss goals, and they use it for other benefits, for example, for cardiovascular health or to reduce inflammation or to stabilize their blood sugar. So let's take a quick look here. It was an eight-week clinical trial. And during that, they found that the people lost almost 12 pounds, um, just less, slightly less than two inches from their waist and two inches from their hips. Their cholesterol went down 18%. 
the uh, bad cholesterol went down 15, the good went up 14, and the triglycerides went down. The fasting blood glucose went down 8%. So, you know, if somebody tended to have slightly high fasting blood glucose, Bambi, you can see that it would help to stabilize it. Mm -hmm. The serotonin goes up by almost 30%. This is uh, really good because a lot of times when we are trying to work on our health and weight loss goals, we become what I call hangry, which is hungry plus angry. And um, that's not a good thing. So this helps us to have that, you know, feel good, to have the, the right mood. It decreases our leptin levels, and leptin is found in our fat cells. And when we're overweight, that means we have leptin resistance, which is kind of similar to insulin resistance in terms of the impact on our health. So when we decrease our leptin levels, then our leptin sensitivity improves. So that makes it easier to release weight. And then finally, um, one of the markers for inflammation is C-reactive protein, and that went down 15%. So just think of that as inflammation. So, you know, this product, to me, Bambi, is just way more than just weight loss, but it's exciting with everything that it can do to help to support our health and wellness goals. So when people ask me if they could start with just one product for, for weight loss or TLS, this would be the one that I would typically recommend. So, do you have questions about the supplements at all? I mean, I, you know, I know that you've read through everything because uh, you're always very organized, but are you comfortable with the, what you're using in that seven-day cleanse kit? And then you've got the OPC, the multi, and the core. That's correct. I have everything. I'm all set to go, and I don't have any questions about that. Okay, excellent. So let's just look at what's the, the next step for the, you know, from the challenge guide. The, what I've got shown on the screen right now is the phase one day planner. And it kind of, you know, uh, explains what we're going to do starting with breakfast. And they consider the, the half of a lemon and the eight ounces of warm water as part of the breakfast. Now, I want to be clear, Bambi, you, you would be taking your isotonics on an empty stomach even before you would be taking in your lemon water. And the reason that's okay is that those isotonics are going to be gone in, you know, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. So, you know, you take your isotonics on an empty stomach when you get up and while you're getting organized with your breakfast, or in, in your case, while, you're get, while Dan's getting organized with your breakfast, because <laughs> I know your husband yeah. is wonderful and fixes you breakfast, um, you know, you just have a few minutes and before you're going to take in your lemon water. The reason we take in the lemon water is because it helps to cleanse our gallbladder. It also helps to balance um, uh, our, the alkalinity in our bodies because most of us are too acidic. And then breakfast is going to include a serving of fruit, a serving of protein, and three servings of veggies. So tell me, Bambi, what you might have, what you might plan to have as a breakfast because I, I know you've, you know, thought about this. I have, and I, um, I'm actually quite boring as far as breakfast goes because I have the same thing just about every day because it works for me. Okay. So my my wonderful husband um, cuts up vegetables for me, peppers, onions, and mushrooms. Okay. And I cook those. Um, I saute those, and I actually add chia seeds because it helps absorb some of the liquid from the from the vegetables. Right. Um, and then I scramble two eggs and I cook them in the vegetables. And mostly the eggs just serve to hold the vegetables together. Um, and so during detox, what I would do is then serve that on a large bed of spinach and, you know, maybe have some sliced tomatoes as well and a serving of fruit. That sounds awesome, Bambi. And so you, you've got a plan and that will work well. A lot of times people don't think about, you know, the bed of greens or even making like a salad and putting eggs on top. So I'm going to share some examples as we move along here, but I think you've got breakfast under control. <laughs> so for your snack, you're going to make sure you're having your water and a serving of fruit. For lunch, then, you're going to have your water, a serving of good fat, which could be like avocado or olive oil, and three servings of veggies. So my recommendation for lunch is typically just to make a really big, healthy salad with all the veggies in it that you enjoy. For lunch, okay. then, I mean, excuse me, for your afternoon snack, you will have water, two servings of veggies, and a fruit. Sometimes what I'll do for this particular snack is do a blend. In, in my, I have a Vitamix. So you can do that, or you can just eat, you know, baby carrots, or you can have some sliced cucumbers, or whatever it is that you enjoy, mushrooms, and then have some fruit with that. Dinner is going to be your water again, a serving of protein, a serving of good fat, and three servings of vegetables. And then you have an optional evening snack. 
So the whole goal here really is to be eating about every three to four hours. And the things that, of course, that are not included, because that's sometimes just as important as talking about what, what is included, we're not going to be having any coffee or, that's caffeine, that, you know, or any other caffeinated beverage. So my go-to on that is um, herbal teas. I like to use lemon zinger because I like the lemon flavor, and it's a decaffeinated tea. We're not having any dairy. We're not having any grains or starches and no alcohol, just re, you know, reinforcing that. And then, you know, it's so important. I know you love to work out, Bambi, and I know that you're really committed to it. But during this one week of detox, we want to make sure that you're focusing more on gentle activities like yoga, um, you know, walking. Not nothing, you know, this is not the time to be doing your, you know, your running or your 5K training or whatever. Right. Do, do you have any questions in general about the guidelines that are that are listed here? No, I don't. I just like to add one thing. You mentioned lemon zinger tea. Um, one of my favorites is a peppermint tea. Okay. Because it it's it's delicious, and for me, it actually tastes like I'm drinking a candy cane. So I feel <laughs> like I'm I feel like I'm getting a treat, but it's totally in the totally program. Good. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's awesome, and that's why it's so important. That's why I'm excited to be able to record this for, to share with other people because everybody has different ideas, and we can all learn from each other's experiences. So thanks for that tip. All right. We're not going to spend time on the Phase 2 Planner, but you're going to review it this week so that when we talk next week, we're ready, okay? Okay. And then this is just the food list. So one of the things that I love for people to do is just to take out a highlighter and to mark all of the things that they like on this vegetable list. Because I think a lot of times people think, I only like like three or four vegetables. But it, I think, honestly, it's just because we don't think about them all. You know, um, one of my favorite things is water chestnuts. Oh, so delicious. Um, another favorite is um, to have jicama. That's the, the one shown on the second column, J-I-C-A-M-A. -A. It's... Um, it's got a really nice texture. You can kind of uh, it's, it's shred it or shave it and put it on top of a salad just to give you a little bit of crunch. So that's pretty delish. Um, and from these veggies, you know, Bambi, the other night I fixed a dish that you and I've talked about in the past. I fixed the faux stuffing. And it's just amazing to me that you could actually have the stuffing during detox. So what's in it? Um, first of all, you steam some cauliflower. And the next thing you do is you either pan saute or you can uh, steam some celery and onions. And I added mushrooms and baby carrots. And you mix it all together. I put in just a splash of olive oil and some seasoning. And it, it just almost tastes like stuffing. And so we had guests the other night for dinner. And they all wanted seconds. And the, the husband wanted thirds <laughs> on that. <laughs> so I just think it's so important to think of new favorites and to think about how we can combine these vegetables to you know, increase our intake because they're a great source of vitamins and minerals and enzymes. So we want to make sure we're eating our veggies. Do you have a special veggie thing that you enjoy, Bambi? Um, well, actually, it was interesting when you mentioned the stuffing the other night because I had been going through some old recipes and I remembered that and I thought, oh, I'm going to have to check that and see if that <laughs> would fit. Yeah. And I was so excited that it would because, as you know, I've, I've made it before right. and it's delicious. It tastes like a treat. It really does. One of my other favorite things to do is to take uh, Brussels sprouts and to slice them up and then to saute, pan saute them with just a little olive oil and then uh, uh, maybe dice up half of an apple to put in with them. Just the combination of the flavors is delicious. So sometimes it's appropriate to combine our fruits and vegetables. And that leads me to the next thing, which focuses on fruits. So almost every fruit is okay. There's a couple things that are missing. Mangoes are missing because they're very high in sugar, and also watermelons missing. But pretty much everything else is listed here. Now, you know, just a couple of notes. One is that dried fruits, you know, kind of concentrate the sugar. You know, cherries, or let's, excuse me, let, let's talk about grapes specifically. Grapes, you might sit down and eat a whole, you know, handful of grapes, and it might be 20 grapes. But you could easily eat like 100 raisins, right, because it would fit in two tablespoons. So um, it's not that we don't al al allow, you know, or, or realize that raisins are healthy, but you'll see that the amount here is limited to two tablespoons. We're not going to have, you know, a cup like we would of, of uh, regular um, uh, grapes. And you can see that we're not having any juices here. And that's because, again, a juice, when we do that, it gets rid of the fiber 
and which is one of the important parts of the fruit. We, we already talked about the fact that people are low on their fiber intake. So that's another point here. And then at the bottom of this slide, we have the protein listed. So during phase one, it's three ounces for both men and women. And that's just going to be a, a three ounces, you know, is a little, a, a little less than the size of a deck of cards. And then in phase two, you're going to get a larger amount. So um, during phase one, you can see everything's marked at the bottom that you can have. So it could be like canned tuna or salmon or sardines, chicken or turkey. We're not eating the skin. You can have eggs or egg whites. You can have lean veal. Um, so it, you can have red meat, but it's got to be veal, which because it's, you know, the fat content is much lower. Tofu for individuals that are, you know, looking for non, uh, you know, animal-based protein. You can have frit, fresh fish, um, salmon, sardines, tuna, flounder, snapper, um, trout. You can have shrimp, scallops. You can have all kinds of seafood. You can have tempeh, TVP, uh, and veggie or garden burgers only in phase two. Those, so those are the ones with the orange asterisk. And those are only going to be available during the second phase. So do you have questions about the protein or any comments or about the fruit, Bambi, while we're on this slide? Um, no, the, I, I have a question about um, eggs versus egg whites. Is, okay. there, is there a preferred, um, you know, why would, why would one choose egg whites over eggs? Yeah, um, over just using times, eggs. Okay, it's a great it's a great question. So you know, for a long time, people thought that eggs were not really you know healthy for you. But more recently, nutritional experts have sort of recounted on that, and they now I mean, it's true that eggs are almost the perfect form of protein because it's all it's balanced. It's a complete protein. So you know, you can definitely have one to two eggs if you for whatever reason want to remove the yolk. And I just want to highlight that you know, yes, there's cholesterol in the yolk. No, that. Cholesterol is not what's causing people to have high, uh, you know, cholesterol when they get their blood test done. You know, that cholesterol, we all manufacture cholesterol in our body, and the starting products for the synthesis are actually carbohydrates. So I see big drops in people's cholesterol levels, you know, when their doctors test their blood, when they start eating low glycemic. Having, whether you have two eggs or three to four egg whites really doesn't matter. For some people, it's just a taste preference, but from a health perspective, either will meet your goals. Okay, thank you. Sure. And, and um, so basically we're good here with the, with the fruits and all the pro also the protein. So the next thing is the tracking sheet. So I love this tracker sheet, and I'm just showing you the front side of it, which is phase one. So it's a little hard to read on here, but the bottom line is, is that there's basically a box to check off for everything to help keep you on track. So at breakfast, just as an example, it's talking about your lemon water, your fruit, your protein, your veggies. And underneath that, there's also a place to check off your supplement use. So you're going to mark your, your multivitamin, your OPC. Um, you're going to mark your um, NutriClean kit, your seven-day cleanse kit products. And then other supplements that you're using can just be handwritten in. It's kind of important for you to mark the time for me because when you are done with this sheet at the end of the day, you're just going to snap a picture with your smartphone, Bambi, and send it over to me. You can just text it to me. You have my number. And, you know, my goal is not to look at it and go, I can't believe she did this. My goal is just to make sure that you're moving in the right direction and that things are balanced. Um, as an example, you know, sometimes people focus so much on the food, but they're not getting the water in. Or they're, they're focused on the water, but they forget that they're actually supposed to be getting in, you know, seven or eight hours of sleep. So it's all of it together that's, that that whole healthy lifestyle is what's going to get you your results. So for that reason, I just want to make sure that you understand that, you know, it's important to, you know, take a, take a quick picture at night or first thing the next morning for the previous day. And then I'll give you result, I mean, some feedback during the day. And I'll just do it by text as well. If for some reason you preferred to email it to me, you could. But the text thing works really, it's just fine. And most of what I'll be doing is just saying, you know, great job. You know, I see you had eight servings of veggies yesterday. Or you might seem a little low on protein. I'll just be making comments to, you know, support you and to hopefully enhance your results. Do you have any questions about the tracking sheet? No. The only thing I would add, but I, I was looking back through some of my old tracking sheets from last fall, and I was glad that I was able to do that because I remember I had a couple of days that my schedule was kind of crazy, I, and so I, I switched 
the time, the timing of my snack and my lunch, for example, and I and I notated that, and um, so I I think that that was important because then you knew if you saw any kind of anomaly, you right. could you could make a comment on that. So exactly, Bambi. And the other piece here that we didn't really say explicitly, but I hope people understand, is that you know being accountable to someone is a huge part of our success. The scientific literature shows that someone who you know, makes a commitment to work on their weight and works with a coach and is accountable, loses twice as much weight. So the TLS 21 day challenge can definitely be done just as a self-directed program. And people do it all the time and they get good results. Um, I hope that what I'm offering as a coach is a little bit of enhanced, you know, um, support by being there on a daily basis to provide some feedback and encouragement and maybe even some inspiration and to help you to celebrate your success as you go. So that's really my goal and I love these sheets for that reason. So we're you know, coming to the end here, but I wanted to just give you some tools and some tips. You've already purchased an Omron. You know that I love that body fat analyzer. So that's to help us to determine what our body composition is. It does it by just taking a small current through your body and the resistivity of fat and muscles different. You can also do that on one of the um, Tanita, you know, smart scales. I kind of like the Omron better because it doesn't seem like your hands get as sweaty as your feet do, and that can affect the reading. You know, you keep the, I want to be clear that you don't want to be measuring with the Omron too frequently because the accuracy is pretty good, but the precision is not great. So you'd have to do five or six different, um, you know, um, measurements to be able to um, be able to get an accurate average. So don't worry about it. Um, you know, if you measure it one week and your body fat percentage is 38%, then you measure it the next week and it's 36%. That's real. So, you know, you just want to look for a general trend. So don't, don't go crazy with it. You okay. need to have a quality digital scale because our weight's important, but I don't ever want somebody to think that the most important metric is their, the number on that scale because it's not. People also should have a kitchen scale if they're, you know, it'll help with the portions of the program. You want a reusable water bottle. If you have one that has a filter on it, then you never have to worry. If you're stopping and you want to fill it up from a public water supply, no problem. I always tell people if they're, if they're not drinking filtered water or don't have a filter on their water bottle, that they become the filter. So um, it's, it's good to have that. Uh, I think it's great to have an activity tracker. So I think, Bambi, you have a Fitbit. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So, you know, whether it's a Fitbit or... Uh, Garmin, any of the devices, people really want to have that because keeping track of like our steps is really huge. And just as an aside, the average person's going to have about maybe 5,000 steps in a day. To be, you know, a, a good first goal would be 10,000 steps and that would be, you know, for good health. If you really want to be fit, then you want a minimum of 15,000 steps per day. So, you know, each person strides a little different, so I don't want to convert it to mileage for you. But the bottom line is we should park as far away from wherever we're, we're going <laughs> and walk in. <laughs> Everybody should have a calendar and a planner. And I know, Bambi, that you are good about, you know, having your schedule planned for the week. You know when you're going to the gym. You know when you're going to go on your bike rides with Dan. So that's excellent. Shopping lists are important. And then also you want to have some good recipes. So these are some recipes that are available. I emailed these to you. Um, there are seven people starting this next 21-day challenge, of which you're a part. And this just talks a little bit about egg white muffins, which have chopped up veggies in them. Uh, there's a recipe for a green smoothie if you want to do something quick on the go. Um, you, there's a Spanish chicken breakfast, so people don't often think about putting chicken in um, or having something you know, that's a non-egg option for breakfast, so this is delicious. And then there's an, uh, a veggie bake uh, egg white, so kind of like a frittata. So you can do that. It's basically a crustless quiche. So these are examples, and of course you have a copy of these. And all of these are available also on tlsslim.com. Now the next thing is lunch and dinner, and I'm not going to read through these, Bambi, but let me just suffice to say that a couple of them are really excellent. <laughs> the cauliflower <laughs> fried rice is for sure a favorite, as is the zucchini spaghetti. Now do you have one of those vegettis that you can make, like, or, or you know, a device to be able to make the zucchini noodles? I do, yes. Okay. And have you tried it with anything besides zucchini? Um, I have tried it, well, and with yellow squash as well. I usually okay. mix How did those. that work out with the yellow squash? 
it looked at, well, not quite as well as the zucchini. I, I find there's a little bit more moisture in the yellow squash. Right. But um, I when I've done it, I have mixed the zucchini and yellow squash. Oh. Um, it makes it very colorful. And um, so, yeah, it looks really well. Yeah, I think that I think that's awesome. And I at Wegmans, you know, I see them make the noodles. Uh, you know, they have them pre-made in the in with the fresh produce, and I've seen them make them out of beets. I've also seen them make them out of sweet potatoes. We wouldn't be having that, of course, at this time. But I mean, it just seems like you can. There's a lot of different options which I had not really considered before. So those the we call them zoodles, zucchini noodles, actually have become a favorite for several of my clients' families. So I that makes always makes me feel good. So I wanted to just show a, a few of my favorite recipes because I thought that might be helpful. And sometimes seeing a picture, you know, kind of makes things more real <laughs> and perhaps more desirable. So the first is my very favorite, which are banana pancakes. And they're so simple because it's just two eggs and one banana, either in your food processor or in your blender. You don't need to add any, you know, baking soda or baking powder or anything. You can add a little vanilla if you want just to give a little flavor. They really don't taste super strong banana-y at all. At all. Um, and when I serve them, I actually top, top them with sliced tomatoes, I mean tomatoes, but <laughs> sliced apples, and they're delicious. The second recipe is um, where you spiralize the zucchini, and then you top it with two eggs with some salt and pepper, and then you microwave everything until the eggs set. And then you top it with sun-dried tomatoes. And that's a really delicious option, too, kind of like an egg salad kind of, you know, breakfast option. You've seen maybe the egg cups that I make all the time. I did them instead of in cupcake tins on the left, I did them in my little heart-shaped tins just because we were having company. Um, they're delicious. I just put any veggie I like in the bottom. If you start with a muffin tin, you've got 12 things there. You're going to just put in your tomatoes, your spinach, your onions, your um, mushrooms, and then pour in a mixture of eggs or, and or egg whites and then you just bake those at 325 for, say, 15 minutes, and then you've got 12 for the week, and you can eat two each day. And then for breakfast, then uh, this is just another salad with egg on the top. So again, think a little bit outside the box. You can have some different things. I think during detox, it's critical to have a delicious detox soup. And so I hope that you have a good recipe. If not, um, I, I will be more than happy to make one available, Bambi. But I typically just start with veggie broth and add in every veggie that I like including diced tomatoes. Um, and so in this particular case, I had celery, onions, carrots, diced tomatoes, and mushrooms, and pieces of asparagus. On the right, it's just to remind you, you can make a green smoothie using vegetables. And then at the bottom, those are, that's a grilled portobello mushroom. And I love to have that for lunch during detox because it kind of reminds me of a chicken breast. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I'm having like, you know, a real, like a real entree or whatever for lunch. So I like to use that. I, and, and I recommend whether you're grilling chicken breasts or you're grilling portobello mushrooms, you know, or broiling them or however you're fixing them, do four, do six, and then freeze them so that you can just pull them out so that it's not a big production when you want to eat healthy. These are some dinner options. And on the top left, maybe, is something that I, you know, you and I've had before. It's a little different version of it. It's um, flaked up chicken on top of zucchinis that are split down the middle. And then there are vegetables underneath. They called it like a, a fajita kind of recipe. But underneath were like onions and peppers. Um, and then they put the, the chicken on top and just baked it, which is delicious. On the lower left is cauliflower rice. So whenever I have somebody that's like, I don't want to give up my, my rice, I strongly recommend you try it because it's so good. The lower right are the noodles like we were just talking about, zucchini and squash combined, baby, just as you said, to make a very colorful and delicious mix. And then the upper right is just uh, raw veggies getting ready to be diced, uh, diced up, ready to be baked in the oven. I also have uh, encourage people, if they're looking for dessert, you can bake an apple and just put cinnamon on it. You don't need any sweetener. It's more than sweet enough. So you can either dice up the apple and you can, you could even, you could pan saute it. You could do it in the microwave. You can bake it in the oven. I usually just bake it in the oven in like a little ramekin and then sprinkle it with cinnamon. So if you're missing something, you know, on the sweet side, that's a great option for people. I have a question here, Nancy. Sure. Um, so we have plans to have some friends for dinner. Okay. Well, it's, not, it's not during detox week, um, but I'd just like to throw this question out. Sure. So, um, so in phase two at dinner, there is no 
option for fruit. The fruit, as I recall, is earlier in the day. Correct. Um, but could I do a baked apple for dessert? Absolutely, and Bambi. Switch I mean, it out for, yes, I, for, for, for a fruit earlier in the day. Right. It will be fine. And the reason it'll be fine, I would probably use your um, your afternoon fruit and combine it with dinner in that case. Okay. Okay, great. Thank and, you. And because whenever we, I mean, the idea is they're giving you the fruit earlier in the day because we want to make sure that we don't increase your blood sugar, right? That's the whole idea. But having something like an apple, which is high in fiber, and then combining it with a meal, the things that blunt the glycemic effect are fat, protein, and fiber. So, you know, if you were going to have that, you know, it's great to do it with the meal, right? So, okay. You know, because it's going it, to, it shouldn't upset your blood sugar at all. So I think that would be a, a great option for you. And sometimes what I do is I'll make like an apple tart in a, like in a pie pan. And I just simply don't have, um, you know, I just don't put a crust on it. I just have right. an apple and layer it and then, you know, cover it with cinnamon. Or you can, you know, bake individual baked apples, which look very pretty. You know, and that gives you options, too. So, yeah, I think it's good, though, that you're planning ahead for phase two. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Sure. So success strategies. Before we start detoxing, people do want to taper off of caffeine because otherwise you're going to end up with a killer headache, and I don't want you mad at me. So I usually tell people, if you are a coffee drinker, to cut down on the number of cups and then to go from, you know, full caffeine to maybe three-quarters regular, one-quarter decaf, and then half and half, and then one-quarter regular, three-quarters decaf so that you're tapering down over two or three days to get, you know, to minimize the impact of that. I suggest that people plan their meals and shop in advance. You really only get in trouble when you come home from work and you're tired and you're hangry and you're ready to eat and you don't have the right stuff there. That is not setting yourself up for success. I encourage people to look for healthy recipes. Where do you find them? TLSSlim.com has a lot of recipes. I showed you that there's a handout specifically with recipes for the 21-day challenge. So, you know, you ask about that, make sure you have a copy. You can also, you know, um, just a lot of paleo recipes would work because they're, they don't have grains, but some of them won't work because they have high levels of fat and other things. You're going to find some new favorites, like instead of rice, we're going to have cauliflower rice. Instead of spaghetti, we're going to have the zoodles or the spaghetti squash. I recommend that people use a veggie wash to clean their produce when you first bring it home and then portion it out right then. I don't bring home strawberries and put them in the fridge. I bring them home, I put them in a colander, I rinse them with veggie wash, I let them drain, I pat them dry, I cut the little tops off, and it's ready. they're ready to eat exactly at that moment. So that's the way I keep stuff in the fridge. Um, if you're going to have, as a snack, say baby carrots, go ahead and, you know, put, the, put them into the little snack bags or a, a reusable, you know, container. Just make sure that you have them portioned out and ready to go, because the easier you make it, the more successful you'll be. I always tell people to buy organic as appropriate. You know, I could tell everyone to buy organic all the time. I think it's important for you to understand about the dirty dozen. Um, these are 12 foods which you definitely always want to eat organic if you can afford to do that and if it's available. There's also a thing called the 15 clean. You can Google that and both of those lists. And the 15 clean, it doesn't really matter. So you don't need to pay the extra. One of the things that cracks me up, though, is that sometimes the organic foods cost exactly the same. And the specific example that I'll give you is for pineapples at Wegmans. Whether you buy a regular pineapple or an organic pineapple, it's $2.99 most of the time. So take the time to look and see. Don't just assume that organic is more expensive. I also mentioned that I think it's great to have six or more chicken breasts cooked and frozen. If you do that, you can make a chicken breast into a lot of things. You can cut it up and have it as a breakfast. You can dice it up and put it on a salad, say for dinner. You can cut it up and put it into your veggie soup to, you know, to put protein into your soup. You can even just put a whole chicken breast in your soup um, and, and, you know, cut it apart as you eat it. It's delicious. Um, you can, there's just so much that you can do with it. You can top it with some fruit salsa uh, just to give it a different flavor. You can top it with a little tomato sauce and make kind of like a chicken parm without the cheese. So there's just a lot that you can do. So it's just to your advantage to have them already ready and available. And it'll also, if you're working with different menus for your family, it'll make it easier for you to ensure you reach your goals without having to make lots of special meals. Some of the tricks of the trade, three to four ounces of protein is, you know, four ounces is considered to be about the size of your palm or a deck of cards. So you can use that as your guideline. You, you can weigh it, and that's great until you get the hang of it. Spices and herbs are going to enhance your recipes. 
and you know, we, water is the best thing to drink, but carbonated water or herbal tea is also okay. So do you have questions about any of that, Bambi? Um, I have a question about the carbonated water. Okay. Um, so that would mean that club soda would be okay, but what about the, the flavored carbonated waters that, that you see all, all different brands? Yeah. But okay, that's a great question. So there's a couple things about that. One is during this program, we're trying to avoid extra, you know, added um, artificial sweeteners and stuff. So some of those flavored waters, you know, the carbonated ones or regular waters even, um, actually have, you know, acesulfame potassium or they might have, um, you know, other sweeteners in them. So I like aspartame, those I would avoid. But if it's just an infused, like a fruit infused water or carbonated water, that's perfectly fine. So it would usually say on the label something like, carbonated water and natural flavorings, which just means basically they squeeze some lemon in it. So what do I do at home? I actually do use carbonated water and then I will just squeeze like half of a lime in it um, just to give it some, you know, flavor while I'm drinking it. So I kind of switch off between regular water and carbonated water. Um, herbal tea, I mentioned I use the lemon zinger. That's okay too. We just want to make sure if we're having eight, eight ounce glasses of water each day that the majority is just plain, plain water because it's absolutely the best. Does that okay, answer it? Thank you. It sure does. Thank you. Okay, great. So some resources that are available. Everything you really need is in that TLS 21 Day Challenge Kit, Bambi. So you had the little brochure, but I've also sent you the, the, the different files, you know, in a, as documents, as PDFs. So you have that too. You've got me as a coach, and hopefully I can provide you with accountability and encouragement. I'm so excited to see your results because I know how committed you are to this, and I know that you're when you make up your mind to do something, you're excellent on follow through. So really, it's we're just waiting for the results at this point. I, I'm not the least bit, you know, I don't have any doubt about how great it's going to be for you. We also have a TLS journal guide, which is really good, and it has a whole chapter on detox. If you know, if somebody's interested in more detailed info, and there's a TLS detox video. And I've put that uh, onto our fi private Facebook groups for people to look at. Um, so uh, again, there's, it's also available through um, on YouTube, and you can also get more information on detoxing from tlslim.com. Now, I support my clients, as you know, Bambi. I have private Facebook support groups, and then everybody is welcome to visit my my uh, public page, which is called Savvy Selections Dr. Nancy. It's my business fan page, and there's always recipes and wellness info there. So really, the next three weeks are going to be really important because you and I have talked about the fact that we can be successful. The question is, how do we remain successful? So it's really all about creating a lifestyle. And it does take, according to the scientific literature, about 21 days to form a habit. And we know that anything worth doing is worth measuring. And that's why we have this very systematic approach where you're tracking everything. You're writing down what you eat, your sleep, your water, and everything, because it's going to also reinforce the changes. And I'm a big believer that small changes yield big results over time. So it's gradual. I love the little uh, picture in the bottom here that says, nothing happens overnight, not weight loss, not healthy habits. So you're on your way, and you're developing good habits, which are just as addictive as bad habits. And I just want to remind you that those good habits are far more rewarding. I also want to just remind everyone that when we talk about our health goals, it's 70% diet, 30% exercise or working out. Uh, you can't outrun your fork, but all of this, you guys, is 100% mental, and that's so important to remember as well, because we can be our own worst enemy. You know, we get in a social situation and we think we have to eat this or do that. We don't need to, so we always want to keep our goals in mind. And, you know, Bambi, I know you're going to stay in touch. I know you're going to be texting me your daily tracking sheets, and I always ask that people share their weight and their waist measurements weekly. Because really, the, when you lose about one inch from your waist, that's 1% body fat. You also have the Omron on hand, Bambi, so you'll be able to actually measure your body fat. So as you get started tomorrow, you know, you're going to want to have recorded again an update on your weight and your waist and your other measurements that, you're, that are critical to you. And you can go ahead and check your body fat again. And that way, you know, just store those data and then just provide me with a weekly update so we can make sure everything's on track. Okay. And then, you know, let me know if you're incorporating new healthy habits. You've been such a great source of recipes for me and, you know, healthy suggestions. So I rely on people like you to help share, you know, good, you know, nutrition and wellness info. So I hope you'll continue to do that. Okay. And I'll just close by asking, do you have any questions or do you feel like you're pretty well prepared to go, go forth and do the 21-day challenge? 
I, I feel like I'm I'm pretty well prepared. You've you've sent out all the information for me to go over. I've done my shopping. I have my food ready to go. So I'm I'm ready to get her done. Well, I look forward to your success, and I'm happy to support you with that. I hope that everyone that participates in the TLS 21 Day Challenge gets great results. And the reason for that is that all of us deserve to be the best version of ourselves. Thanks so much for your help today, Bambi, and good luck with your program. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, Nancy.